How's it going? I'm Matt Nuzzo. We're here at the Real Flagship Store in Cape Hatteras, North Carolina to talk to you about the 2012 Nash Park. Been out on this kite all weekend. Really nice improvements. Want to talk to you about some of the differences, but first we're going to go over what comes in the package. All 2012 Nash kites are sold as kite only. So that means when you buy a kite, you're going to get the canopy, the kite bag, your, your, your repair kit, and your, your uh, manual, and that's it. You want to add a bar, get the 2012 bar. You want to add a pump, you gotta buy the pump as well. So unless you wanna pump up your kite with your mouth, make sure you select add a pump as well. So let's talk about the features of the bar. There's been a lot of improvements on the 2012 bar. A lot of really, really nice stuff. We're gonna start with the leash. They've added a, a really nice release. It's similar to the smart loop system here. It clips right back in, slides in. Really simple, super nice, good solid clip on the far end. At the bar, we're gonna start at the improvements on the bottom of the smart loop. So we've got here, we've got your D-Power system, which also acts as an advanced leash. So you can hook your leash here. Don't recommend it for beginners. Anyone beginner wanting full 100% flagging D-Power is gonna hook your safety leash to this yellow line. That's gonna flag the kite if you pull the release. This one is gonna give you all the D-Power of the D-Power strap, but it does not flag the kite. It's nice to have both those options underneath the smart loop. The main improvement with the smart loop is this little mechanism here. They made this, it didn't seem like it was a big deal until I was riding it. A lot, of, so much easier to, to, to cleat and uncleat. Really, really impressed with the, uh, what they've done here with the Smart Loop. Um, you know, so this is by far the easiest to power and depower of any of the, of the uh, below bar depowers that I've used to date. So I'm really stoked with that improvement there. The bar, uh, it's still the adjustable bar end, so you got 18, you know, set up like it is now with the, with the lines on the end here. Got 20 inch bar, if you flip this around and so the knot is on the inside, on both sides you're gonna have an 18 inch bar. Carbon bar, aluminum dugout, you've got your floats here. Underneath the floats you've got adjustment lines if you need to adjust there. Climbing up the bar here, sliding stopper, they've put this Thing on here which a lot of people like to do just to keep the bar from going too far away uh, on these kites are really stable I don't think you need it but maybe some of the other line needs it you know it's just to keep the bar from going too far away this is really the main one of the main features they've changed added a really big swivel here um, so the the swivel here you know this is it shows also it comes down two two lines down in the center last year they had a single line that wide out this system I find to be a lot nicer two lines right down to the swivel um, your release worked every time. I tried it a bunch of times. Uh, it comes right through here and then butts right back up against the swivel. Really simple. Uh, does the swivel work? Works about as well as most sw swivels work in the sand. So yes, it works better than most. Does it work all the time? Not all the time. So I had over a 50% success rate. Uh, I had a few twists in and I had to reach up and untwist. It was pretty hard to reach. Um, I don't really care about twisting my lines. Uh, if you're really meticulous and make sure this doesn't have sand in it uh, when you're, after you launch your kite, then you're not going to have a problem and it will work. So that's the bar. Really nice improvements on the bar. Totally stuck with this uh, Nash bar setup. Let's get into the features of the kite. Nash Park is known as their free ride kite. Uh, I think it fits a huge range of people. Um, three strut kite, so it's really lightweight. Center strut, two side struts, and then the leading edge comes all the way down to this end here has a lot of arc in the kite, so there's a lot of canopy shape to it. Uh, also has this full wingtip. Um, Nash construction, strong, but really, really lightweight. Well, a lot of the key, one of the key features of the Nash kites that I always find is they have this really lightweight, crisp feel. Um, they make a super lightweight design, which I, I really, really like. Uh, bridle system on it, gone with the same bridle system that they were using last year for the park. Um, you know, real simple attachment points here. Uh, one pulley here, trailing edge. You've got a direct connect trailing edge. You can adjust for your turning speed here. There's a few adjustments up here on the leading edge. I never mess with those. Trailing edge, you can adjust uh, just quite a bit um, and change the turning speed uh, on the kite. Um, one feature they've added to the wingtip here is the anti-stiction window. <laughs> uh, if you know what that means, look up Webster's Dictionary. I doubt you're gonna find that word. Pretty, uh, it must be a Hawaiian word I don't really know about, but. Uh, it basically put a little mesh square, uh, mesh triangle in here. Um, what that's going to do is allows water to drain out. So uh, last year, sometimes the wingtip would catch, fill with water, and not be able to relaunch. This year, put that window in, boom, the, the wingtip pops right out of the water, no problem. Uh, stupid name, but it's effective. Uh, let's see, other key features is cruiser on the back here. On this three strut design, um, 
you've got your your uh, octopus system here. They've they've stuck with this uh, with this type of opening here. So changing the bladder gets easier than it's been before. Not as easy as you know other single point inflations, but it does deflate a lot better. So octopus system deflates really easily, but it's not quite as uh, easy to change a bladder if you have to do that. Um, on the leading edge, got your deflate, standard deflate, 11 mil, one way. Uh, they got the one way on the inflate. That's that's uh, characteristic on all 2012 Nash kites. And then finally, it's not really a big deal on the smaller kites, um, particularly because they relaunch well. But this is a light wind relaunch setup. It's an accessory kit. You can have come comes from your bar right up through the outside line and hooks up here. Allows you to relaunch the uh, relaunch the kite really easy. It's nice for beginners on the bigger sizes. So those are kind of some of the key features with the kite. What I want to do is talk to you guys about who this kite's for and what I thought. So I'm just one rider. This is what I think about this kite. You're gonna have to get out there, test it on your own. Take my advice for it. Don't take my advice for it. Agree with me, disagree. I don't really care. This is what I think about this kite. 2012, awesome kite. Really, really nice improvements from 2011. 2011 was the first year of the park. Uh, had, didn't have quite the power that everyone liked. Had a really nice, light, snappy feel. Um, was, you know, had kind of a spongy, uh, you know, so the bar was like, uh, you know, kind of a little, little bit loose feeling, even though it was really quick turning. So that's one of the main things I noticed as soon as I got the kite. You pull the bar, direct bar feel, the kite turns. Lost that sponginess that they, they used to have in the bar. Other thing is the stability and the low end power significantly increased. So the kite overhead, let the bar out and the kite would just sit there. Um, and then the low end power, dive the kite and it'd give you a lot better low end power than the 2011. Uh, the other key thing uh, that I noticed was relaunch was really, really well improved. Crash the kite, boom, slammed in the, wa in the white water a bunch of times on the surf. Wham, wham, wham. And the thing just popped right up on its own with very, very little input on my end. Um, overall, really like the improvements that made to this kite. Has a real lightweight, high performance feel, but in a user friendly package. Uh, the final thing that they've added is just a ton of deep power. When you let that bar out, it just completely flags out and there, you know, completely dumps power and there's just, there's no more power in it. Makes it really nice for wave riding. You send the kite right through the middle, push the bar out, kite depowers and you can cruise down the line, power up, pull back in. Uh, things I didn't really like about the park, um, it still has a little bit of a stall in the wingtip. Doesn't give you a full, uh, you know, full carving power through the turn. So there's still a little bit of a stall. Uh, I unhooked some. It didn't really backstall as much as last year's, but there's still a little bit of that there. You just have to be careful and, and kind of do it wisely. If you really slack the lines and the kites in the middle of the wind window, it will backstall on you. Um, the other thing is just the, uh, the power through the turns. It has good power through the turns because the arc in the wingtip. Um, but it, it does uh, it does stall a little bit and then pulls through the, the end of the turn. Those are really the only things that I didn't like on, on this year's setup. Oh yeah, finally, bar comes with 20s on it. Um, 10 meter and bigger have line extensions. I hate 20s. I put the 24s on it. It was a, it was like a different kite for me. So really like the line extensions using those on the on this kite. Uh, this kite's going to be most like a, a Nash torch that fully depowers. Other kites that I've ridden that, that are like it are the uh, F1 Bandit 4. Uh, pretty similar shape, a uh, lot of depower like the Bandit, good low end power. And it, it's a type of kite where if you're going, you're going in a straight line, really st tracks it wind nicely, gives you nice, uh, you know, nice range in a straight line. As you carve towards it and you take slack off the lines, it doesn't have quite that carving consistent power through the turn like an Envy would, like a Liquid Force Envy would, um, but it's just a little bit different ride and feel. I think that this kite's gonna be really well suited for uh, people that are uh, you know, intermediate or better are gonna love this kite because it's a really high performance feel. Um, can a beginner ride it? Absolutely. If you've got good kite control and uh, you're, you're, uh, you've got good kite control and you're a more advanced beginner, no problem to ride this kite. Uh, straight beginner, that's not that great with the kite. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it because you definitely need to keep your game, you know, you need to keep on top of this kite so it doesn't get away from you. But if you're an advanced beginner and you want a kite you'll never outgrow, Nash Park's gonna be a real, real winner for you. Uh, totally stoked with the new improvements. Uh, I've got an eight and 10 in my quiver and those are gonna be sides I'm gonna ride a lot down here in Cape Hatteras. Uh, really fired up with this kite. I look forward to getting a bunch more sessions on it. If you have any more questions, call 866-REAL-KITE or check us out on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash realwatersports. Thanks and have a great day.